It's the season of the cold pasta salads. Today we're making a delicious tortellini antipasto pasta salad that combines all of the things that I love on an antipasto board up in pasta salad form and you're going to love it. Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali. Today we're making tortellini pasta salad. It's got an antipasto flair to it. It is so simple and easy, extremely adaptable. You can use whatever you want, whatever you like on an antipasto board, you could add in here. You can use different pastas if you don't want to use tortellini. You can use literally whatever you want. These are things I can always count on having on hand, so I can always pull this together easily. Nine times out of ten, I will use different pastas. I love tortellini with this because when it's cold, especially if it's a cheese full tortellini, it's got lots of really yummy flavor. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you sort of what I'm working with here to give you an idea but by all means, feel free to use what you like. Tortellini. I've already boiled these. I buy either fresh or you can buy them frozen. Uh, and all you do is boil them until they float. Salted water, of course. Drain them. And this is the only time it's acceptable to rinse your tortellini with some cold water to stop them from cooking any further. Um, and you set them aside. I'm going to add salami. You can use prosciutto, mortadella, soppressata, speck. You can use anything you want. I always have salami on hand because I love it. It's versatile. It's something that I love eating in anything. So we always have that. Provolone, which is a must. Lots of herbs. I'm using chives instead of onions, but you can use shallots, red onions, whatever you want. Basil, parsley. We've got some fresh mozz. We've got some tomato. We've got some parm. I've got some marinated artichokes, pepperoncini, and calamara olives. Um, you'll also need some garlic, a little vinegar, a little olive oil, a little salt, a little pepper. It is going to be delicious. So let's get started. Um, like I said, this is, it's very versatile. I'm going to be making this for a little birthday party that we're having for Mia next week because her birthday is in January, <laughs> um, which it's always hard to have a party in January, but it specifically was hard this year. So we postponed it six months. Um, and I'll be making a big batch of this because it's so good. You can make it the day before it gets better and better as it sits. Um, and it's just phenomenal. You can add roasted peppers to this if you wanted to. I mean, honestly, the world truly is your pickle when it comes to anything, but particularly things like salads, soups, stews, things like that. All I'm doing is I'm chopping my mozz. I really love it when I can find the mini bocconcini, tiny, tiny, tiny pearl of mozzarella. I can't always find them, but when I find them, I'd rather use those because I don't have to chop them. I just throw them right in. Um, Everything will change in terms of, everything can change in terms of what you want more of. Do you want more pasta or do you want more stuff? Do you know what I mean? I'd rather have more stuff than pasta. I don't know why. Um, I just like it that way. But hey, the world is your pickle, my friend. So we've got our mozz. I'm going to add that right in. I'm going to add all of it because it's delicious. It's a pound and I like it. I like it. Okay. And now all I'm going to do is take my salami. This is a good, uh, nice and thin, it's four ounces. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a really nice chop. Um, it's much, much easier to cut things through that are fatty like salami, prosciutto, when you've got a really sharp knife. So make sure you do that. Or uh, what also helps is if you throw your salami, prosciutto, whatever, in the freezer for like 20 minutes, just kind of helps it be a little more firm so it doesn't slip off your knife easy. I love salami. You love salami? I love salami. Salami on a pizza, wildly underrated, might I add. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chop up provolone. I'll chop up some artichokes, I'll add them right in. I'm just gonna chop things. You're not missing nothing. Missing very little. Tomatoes and all their lovely juices. I'm gonna go ahead and take some marinated artichokes. I love these, these are from Costco and they're really lovely. We buy them two or three jars at a time because they're fantastic, they're good in everything, but primarily good. I like some of that oil in there. Uh, salads, anything like that, just cause they're so flavorful. Give that a little chopperoo so that they're more bite-sized pieces. I added pretty much everything else in there with the exception of the pepperoncini and my herbs. Beautiful. You can see it's a lot of stuff 
compared to my pasta. But that's how I like it, right? That's just my preference. And then these are just sliced pepperoncini. Again, do what you want. These are nice and spicy. Love them. Gotta have them in antipasto salad. It's my thing. I'm obsessed. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of basil behind. And then I'm gonna take my basil and my parsley. I'm gonna give everything a really good chop. This is like very, very classic pasta salad vibes, um, which I love. Sometimes it's like really nice to play around and do like different things and get really creative in the kitchen. But I also feel like, and I feel like this a lot on holidays. Like on holidays, I want my my Donna's seafood dishes on Christmas Eve. I want those familiar flavors. I want those things that I know I love. And sometimes I feel that way about food if I'm entertaining people or if I'm having friends and family over. I wanna make things I know they love, like tried and true family favorites. And this is one that we just absolutely adore. Um, and it always just goes down so well. So why not, right? These are my chives. These are beautiful chives that we're growing in the garden. And they are like growing wild right now. We've got so many. It's unbelievable. That and green onions, um, which I love because I love that like light, mild onion flavor, but it's not so pungent that it takes away from everything else. So that's lovely. I'm gonna go ahead and add all of these in. But again, you don't have chives, you have red onion, use red onion. You don't have red onion, you've got shallot, use a shallot. No one's gonna care, I promise. And then we're gonna add in our tortellini that I went ahead and boiled in salted water. Let's give everything a really good mix before we add the dressing. Nice tossy toss. Look at those colors. Can you even stand it? You know that's gonna be delicious. You know that's gonna be incredible. Now we make the dressing. Dressing, super simple. I have a little bit of whole grain mustard in here. Um, you could use any mustard that you like. You could use a Dijon mustard. I like a little whole grain mustard. It gives you a little texture. It gives you a little tang, um, which I really like. If I can get this out of here, that would be fantastic. I would thoroughly appreciate that. So close yet so far. I don't want to smash it because I need to grate it. You know what I mean? I like grating my garlic for this because then you don't, chunk down on, chop down on big chunks of garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, I'll do two. You know what? We like garlic around here, so I will go ahead and do two, but you're the boss in your own kitchen. You can do whatever, whatever your heart desires, go for it. And if you wanted to do a low carb, keto situation, leave out the tortellini. Leave it out, just make a really delicious antipasto like salad situation and you're in business, right? A little bit of red wine vinegar. Well, it's a lot of pasta salad, so about yay much. I also like to do a splash of balsamic. A small pinch of sugar, adding it right to the acid really helps sort of break that sugar down really quickly. Mix that around. I also want to season with a good pinch of salt because this is the only time you're salting everything else with the exception of the pasta that was salted while it was cooking. Black pepper, beautiful. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my extra virgin olive oil if I can get this thing off. Otherwise we're gonna be here for the next six years. And it's usually two to one, you'll do two parts olive oil to the one part vinegar. So if you added a quarter cup of vinegar, you would add a half a cup of olive oil. Uh, but obviously that depends on how much dressing that you're making. Let's just check. Nope, needs a bit more oil. And I might not use all the dressing because this did make quite a bit. Honey is that good, okay? And some parm. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should if you don't, because I share lots of fun things, uh, I have a whole highlight on how I grate my parm in my blender. It's the best thing ever, it's the best trick ever. Adding that in, 
That was a big chunk. This is just phenomenal. You have to just trust me, okay? Beautiful. Oh my word. Let's add half. And then we toss and see where we end up. We might need all of it. We might not. This is absolutely phenomenal. I'm not gonna add the rest of the dressing. I will keep the rest of the dressing on hand. I mean, look at those beautiful colors. And obviously this is gonna have to go in the, in the um, fridge for a little bit, just so that all those flavors can really get to know each other and they can get all delicious and the pasta will soak up the dressing and it also will soak up the flavor from the tomato and the artichoke and all of those really beautiful things like that, a little bit more black pepper on top, and some fresh basil. That looks gorgeous. A Little bit of hot pepper, black pepper. And if you're feeling fancy, and I like spice, a little bit of pepper flakes, red pepper flakes, and now I just need a fork. I need a fork. I need some, some stuff. It is. So delicious. It's pungent with the vinegar, but it's spicy from the garlic because when you grate garlic, it's really, really potent. So you may just want to use one clove instead of two. The parm is there. It's giving you texture. It's giving you salty deliciousness. I mean, it is literally, when you make it, you'll understand why I'm making it for a birthday party for people. It's that good and it will taste even better tomorrow morning once it's got some time in the fridge to really set in those flavors to develop. Chef's kiss. Laura in the kitchen.com for the written recipe. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. Leave any suggestions down below for recipes for this upcoming summer because we are here to party and make up for last year. Ooh, ooh. I'll see you next time. Bye.